Hello, friends! In this episode, I will tell you an incredible story about how one family rescued a wounded fox, and after some time, the parents were shocked to find how the fox paid them back for his salvation. My husband and I love nature, and often, when we have an opportunity, we choose to go to the countryside and enjoy the fresh air. This weekend, my husband, my daughter, and I went away from the city to the village. We wanted to have a good rest, go fishing, and catch a trophy fish. The places we were planning to go, I had known since my early childhood. My parents used to have a house there, inherited from my grandparents. As time passed, everyone began to move away to cities, so the village began to devastate and my parents sold the house. But the old people remain there, and when you wish to go there, you can always spend a couple of days in the house of one of them. We agreed in advance in which house we would stop, took all the necessary things, and started our journey. The village was not that close, two hours if there's no traffic. The weather was great. My husband was driving and my daughter and I were looking out of the window. We drove on a country road and had to drive slowly. It had been raining recently, so the road had been washed out. My daughter fell asleep and I was ready to start dozing when my husband suddenly stopped. I opened my eyes and saw that he unfastened his belt and got out of the car. And then I looked at the road. Covered in mud, an animal was laying on the side of the road. It was so dirty that it wasn't even clear what color it was. I also unfastened my belt and went out. Having stepped closer, I realized that it was a fox. He seemed to have been recently hit by a car. The country road was so wet, and if you didn't care about your car, you could drive fast. But how could you leave an animal dying alone here? Sometimes I can't understand people's actions. Poor animal! His eyes were opening and closing slowly. His chest was barely moving, but he was still breathing. However, his state was deplorable. My husband and I didn't know what to do and kept standing and looking at the animal. At that moment, the car door opened and our daughter jumped out, ran past us, sat next to the fox, and started patting on his head. Honey, we can hardly do anything here, her father told her. Then our daughter looked at him. It was the first time in our life when we saw her with such a serious, adult look. She said she wouldn't leave the fox here, and she was certainly not joking. The nearest town was quite far away. We decided to take him to our village and hoped that someone would maybe be able to help there. I took a blanket out of the car and my husband carefully laid the animal on it, wrapped him up, brought him to the car, and put him in the back seat. My daughter climbed in too. She laid the fox's head on her lap and we set off. If we were able to help the fox, then we couldn't lose precious time. We drove along the dirty road as fast as the road allowed us. Our daughter persuaded the fox to wait a bit as good people would help him soon. But the fox was just laying there and staring into nothingness. It was evident that the animal was very sick. Once he even vomited on the floor of the car. When we finally reached the village, we stopped at the first house in which we saw people. The light was on and the stove was burning in the house. My husband ran out of the car and knocked on the gate. After some time, we heard the door opening and an old man came out of the house. He quickly realized what was happening. He was standing and thinking, scratching his head, and then told us to go to the herbalist old woman. She was the only one who could somehow help in this situation. She lived on the outskirts of the village. When we arrived at her house, she was sitting on a bench and sorting out some bundles of herbs. Please, can you help us? We were sent to you because people said that only you could help. I showed her the poor animal. The woman looked at him and said, bring it to me. She collected her bundles and went to accompany us into the house. The hallway smelled of medicinal herbs, wisps with Ivan tea, calendula, and other unknown medicines were hanging everywhere. She cleaned a small table by the window and pointed at it with her hand, put it down. My husband laid the animal on the table and the woman began to examine it. The fox had a broken paw. Most likely his lungs also had some problems and he had probably a concussion because he was so sick. It's good that you brought it to me. You managed to do it on time. Now go away. Bring me clean water from a spring nearby and leave it in the hallway. And come to me in a couple of days. Of course, we were surprised that the old woman was so confident in her words, but decided to listen to her. After all, we had no other choice. We took water containers which stood at the house entrance. In general, I got the impression that the woman had been waiting for us. It seemed that she knew that we would visit her, sitting on a bench and completely not surprised when we arrived. She had even left a water tank at the entrance. Well, maybe I'm just making this up. Or maybe people were coming to her so often that she sent people for water by way of a thank you. 
We went to the spring. It was not easy to find it as it was closed in the bushes. We didn't think about what we would do if the fox recovered, but we hoped for it very much. We took water, left it where the old woman said, and drove off to settle in our house. The whole night we couldn't rest. We were sitting on the veranda and wondering how the fox was doing, if everything was fine with him. Two days passed. In the morning at five o'clock, our daughter woke us up. We explained to her that it was too early to go. She got upset and went to sit outside. After a couple of hours, after having breakfast, we went to the herbalist old woman. We arrived at her house, knocked, but she didn't come out. We waited a bit, knocked again, and then decided to come in on our own. The woman was sitting inside and drinking tea. Our fox was laying in the wooden box at the stove. You came just on time. Come on in, we'll drink tea. I need to tell you something. We agreed and sat at the table and my daughter went to the box near the stove. The clean fox was lying in the box. His legs and stomach were bandaged. In general, he was looking much better, but it was clear that he was still very weak. Having seen the girl, the fox slightly waved his tail straight like a dog. She went up to the fox, greeted him, and sat next to him, gently patting on his head. Your fox will certainly get better, the old woman said, but he can no longer live in the wild nature because the wounds are very serious. The fox will be recovering for a long time and won't be able to be a good hunter anymore. You have to decide what to do with it. And by the way, it wasn't a coincidence that the animal was in your way. I see your girl, she nodded towards our daughter. She and this fox are somehow connected. You can't ruin the connection, otherwise something bad will happen. My husband and I looked at each other. My husband had a surprised look, but I wasn't surprised at all. This old woman immediately seemed to me not that strange, but there was a feeling that she could predict some things. Okay, take the fox and leave. I have many things to do, the woman said, pretending to be very busy. Here, I collected some herbs in a bag and wrote on a piece of paper when you need to give them to the animal. Be careful and don't mix it up. I took the bag and gave her a bit of money in return. I felt like I needed to give her something. However, the woman didn't take the money and said that she didn't need it. You better bring me water from a spring, and when you will be in our village again, stop by and tell me how the fox is doing, if everything is okay with him. Then we left. The fox turned out to be quite an old male. When we went home, he endured the road well, and we began to take care of him. Our daughter went to kindergarten. As soon as she left school, she ran home to her new friend. She started to call him Ray. He learned to walk on a harness, but sometimes showed aggression, so we tried not to leave our daughter alone with him. Some time passed. We decided to go to the village again, but now we had Ray with us. We arrived there safe and sound and went to the old woman to show her the fox. He recognized his savior and ran to fawn on her. Then we went to settle in the house. My husband and I were busy unpacking when I noticed out of the corner of my eye how my daughter and the fox were playing outside. Then he bristled, jumped, and knocked my daughter to the ground. I ran out to them, shouting at the fox so that he would let her go. However, when I ran closer, I saw that everything was fine with my daughter. She sat and looked at the fox with surprise. The fox was holding a snake in his paws. It turned out that he saved her, and then I understood everything. I remembered the words of the herbalist woman that the fate of the animal and my daughter was connected. We saved him, and he saved our daughter. The fox lived with us for several more years and then passed away. Apparently, his life mission was completed. That was our touching story for today. Dear friends, if you liked the story, share it with your friends, and don't forget to click like and subscribe to the channel. Good luck!